नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मास नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मास नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मास Okay, today my topic is merits and demerits. Uh, this was actually my first topic to discuss, uh, start to discuss with you, but uh, I was not able to start that topic with you. But anyway, now we got that chance. Merits, demerits, and also connecting with these two words, I would like to talk about uh, wholesomeness and unwholesomeness. These words are very famous among the Buddhist uh, literature and also the teachings of the Buddha. Uh, we call in Sinhala, Pim, Pau, Kusal, Akusal. Uh, these words are familiar for you, not only for you, even for everybody. Merits, demerits, wholesome action and unwholesome actions. So I would like to start with you what is the knowledge that you have about uh, merit and demerits? This word, even in the school, you can, you might heard this word, merits and demerits. What is that? What does it mean? Merit and demerit? Yes? Merits are good things that a person does in their life, whether it's helping themselves or helping others. Merits are uh, mm -hmm. is accumulated and will help with the future. So, for example, if I were to help someone with a question that they have, I would be getting good merits from that. And then demerits would be something bad you do that negatively, <coughs> negatively mm -hmm. affects another person or yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is very good, but I like to go the grassroots level of these uh, explanations. Merits, as uh, Pravit mentioned, it is something good that we consider as a good thing. So actually, uh, the word that we use punya or ping means something should be the results of some activities. What are the results, uh, the activities done by someone else, something that, we, that he exa exactly said, huh? good activities. So the results should be that good activities, happiness, which we call merits. So merits is a synonym for happiness. Happiness. For example, you are helping a disabled bird, or might be a dog, might be a cat, anyone, even the human being, it does not matter, someone who is disabled, you are helping. So after done that, seeing and thinking of the activities done by you, you can be happy. This is the merits. And same way, uh, think about the people who are engaging with some kind of unwholesome activities. Likewise, uh, I can say, according to the, uh, this culture, those are not considered as uh, unwholesome activities, but according to the, re uh, the reality, not just the Buddhist teaching, uh, the reality, hunting, fishing, all these are unwholesome activities because we are hurting someone, some other living beings, which we are not supposed to do. So a person who is in hunting, taking aim and shooting, they can kill maybe deers, or squirrels, whatever. And then that person can be happy. Hooray, I did that. That person also can be happy. But that happiness come through the uh, uh, unwholesome state of his mind. Unwholesome states means his mind full of 
anger. His mind is full of desire. His mind full of ignorance. This is the most important thought that the, he had, ignorance. He is the person who is who does not know the reality, ignorance. Because of these three roots, he did that unwholesome activity. But he is trying to show he is happy achieving that, accomplish that goal. But according to the Buddhist explanation, there is no real happiness. He is suffering himself. He is worrying himself. But he tried to show us to others, or oh, he's enjoyed at that moment, he's very happy. So, as we know, now we have a very tricky part to understand. People can be happy even though doing some unwholesome activities. Therefore, to understand merits and demerits, we have to think about their mentality. What kind of mental, mental situation would be there? This is very important because we are living under the mind. We are living under the mind. Mind is the leader, mind is the poor runner. We are, we are doing and thinking everything according to our mind. Therefore, we to decide whether it is a merit, meritorious deeds or demerits, we have to see the roots of that person's mind. This is very important to understand merits and demerits. As you know now, merits are the things that you can be happy. If you are full of merits, you can be happy all the time. If you don't have happiness, you are living with uh, angry thoughts, uh, unhappy moods. Uh, so it seems you are unhappy. It seems you are full of demerits. But not all the time. If you are ignorant, if you don't know the reality, if you are full of uh, some other unwholesome uh, thoughts, then as a result of that, there might be some kind of unwholesome situation, unwholesome, unhappy situation with you. But anyway, very important thing is the roots that you have in your mind. You can decide whether it is wholesome or unwholesome or merits or demerits. You can, uh, you can uh, see the results through your roots. What kind of thoughts are there in your mind? This is very important. Now, as you know, the Buddhist followers, they have so many explanations about the meritorious activities. They have so many explanations. Uh, you might have heard uh, uh, Dasa Punya Kriya, uh, 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 Dasa Punya Kriya and uh, Dasa Kusal, and uh, away, uh, you're not supposed to engage with any of unwholesome activities, which we call Dasa Akusala. And uh, there are four kind of uh, uh, demeritorious activities that we call uh, Satara uh, Karma Klesha. We're not supposed to do any of these things to maintain happiness with us. That is our goal. We are working for our happiness. As you, as you guys, kids, you go to school, you are collecting so many information through readings and uh, participate in classes. For what? You want to be happy. At the end, you want to be happy. Happiness is the goal for our life. So we are working for that. Even when you became adult, as an adult, then now you have experience with your parents, they are also working for their happiness. They are working for their happiness. Even the uh, uh, ancestors, they are also working for their happiness. Not the people who are with us now, even the people who were in this world, they also did their work for their happiness. Who will be in the future? They are also working for their happiness. Therefore, 
eternal goal for all living being is to be happy to be happy maintaining that goal we are working for that so understanding merits and demerits is very important for us because that is the way that we can get into the right path as you know these days you are talking about noble eight pole path today we can understand why we should apply this eight steps for our life what is the purpose you can understand through this merits and demerits and also men and also activities before that i would like to uh, discuss something about the uh, importance of our life and uh, what is the most important thing in in our life i have a uh, uh, yes i have a uh, can you see this i hope everybody can see this this slide yes we can see okay now you can see about some explanation for our about our life physical formation plus mental formation then you can see a life okay life means in here a live being and particularly i'm talking about a human being so through you know what you can gain through your physical formation all these body parts ear nose tongue all these body parts are the parts of your physical form then you have feeling sensation accumulation and perceptions all these are belongs to our mental formation our mind so whenever these two things are get together then you can see a living being living person you can see living person okay now you can see you can understand in this very life this physical form is not enough we have to even think about our non physical part which we call mental forms this is very important to understand this part i would like to go next slide this is very easy to understand in this now you can see physical form is here but mental form non physical parts already left from the physical form there is no connection with physical form and the mental form okay then we is ready to say it is a dead body because you have eye you have ear nose tan and the body but you can see pictures you can hear sounds you can taste you can smell you can get any feelings all these physical forms had become useless inactivated inactivated why what happened there no feelings no sensation no accumulation no perception why because the mental form already left from that physical form mental form is left from the physical form then you can see a dead body that is the time we can we ready to say dead body now you can see how important your mind is you can understand how important your mind we are completely working with our mind the buddha said most important thing that we have is our mind not something else we have to develop our mind we have to protect our mind we have to increase the mind abilities uplift our abilities which abilities mind mental abilities mental abilities why the mind is the most important thing mind is the most important thing therefore we have to develop our wholesomeness wholesomeness for what 
to gain merits, to reduce demerits. That is our duty, that is our responsibility. We born to this world for that. We born to this world for that. So, to understand it uh, more, I would like to go another slide. You can see this slide. You know, we are working, talking, commands by mind. We have commands from our mind. According to our mind, we talk, we work. Through our talk and work, others can decide our behavior, whether it is good behavior or bad behavior. Others can decide it. If someone considers as a good behavior, then good behavior should have these qualities. What are the qualities? It should be useful to yourself. Useful to others, not just you, and useful to both. Why? You have these qualities, your moral I mean, discipline, and your concentration is very good, and you are gaining the wisdom. So, everybody can consider your behavior is wholesome and good behavior. This is the path for happiness. If you have these qualities with you, if you are gaining these qualities with you, so you can have a good behavior. Everybody can say about you, oh, he is a nice person. He is one of a uh, person who, who has a lot of human qualities. Finally, we can consider, oh, he's a good human being. If you don't have these qualities in some degrees, then you, uh, you according to your behavior, others can be considered, oh, he's a bad person, he's a bad guy. Why? Always he has harmful to you, yourself. He is harmful to himself. Harmful to others, not just only him, harmful to others and harmful to both. Why? Greediness is there with him, anger always with him, ignorance also always with him. So now you can see if there is greed, anger and ignorance, so each and every time that person would be a bad person. Dear friends, this is very important thing that you should keep in your mind. Good and bad both are with us because we are mundane. We are not uh, eliminated all the defilements from our mind yet. We are practicing the teachings of the Buddha to eliminate all defilements from our mind. So still we are living with Greed, anger, ignorance. And same time we have moral concentration and wisdom. All these uh, things also we have with us. As you know, we are practicing noble eight pole path starting with Samaditi, right view. And uh, you might uh, discuss with Bhante Ji all these things, right view, right concept, uh, uh, right speech, all these things I think you already discussed with Bhante Ji. But uh, anyway, all, all these steps are the steps which is help us to gain this moral concentration and wisdom, which we call in Pali, Sila, Samadhi, Prakta. These are the results of noble eight pole path. So when you live with these qualities, well, Discipline, well concentrated and wisely. If you are living with these qualities, then your behavior we can consider as a good behavior. You are a person who has 
qualities which is directly connected with the human qualities. Likewise, compassion, sympathetic joy, equanimity. These qualities are the qualities that we have. You can recognize whether he's a human being, a good human being or not, uh, through these qualities. If you have these qualities, yes, definitely that he is the person that we can consider as good human being. Who are them? Who has loving friendliness thoughts, which we call metta. Karuna, compassionate person. And mudita, sympathetic joy. And uh, upekha, equanimity. These are the qualities. These four qualities are the qualities that we should establish ourselves to have wholesome mind, wholesome actions. To have wholesome mind and wholesome acting, action. If you, I mean, we as mundane, we are living with these both together. We have greedness. No one is not eliminated greedness completely yet. But we are controlling our greediness. We are controlling our anger. We are controlling our ignorance, avijja. Why we are controlling? To increase moral concentration and wisdom ourselves. So if someone controlling greed, anger, and ignorance, and same time they have opportunity to gain moral concentration and wisdom, so that person is the person who has a lot of merits. That person is the person who has a lot of merits. Now you can see what are the uh, activities that we should do to develop our happiness. What are the activities that we should apply to gain our happiness, our merits? This is the way to reduce our demeritoriousness and increase merits. This is the way. So now you can see the uh, see you can see the activities. Uh, that we can apply for our day-to-day -day life to gain, enhance our qualities or happiness, or merits and demerits. All our actions, we can be divided into three groups, generousness, discipline, and meditation. These are the three activities, generosity, discipline, and meditation. These are the three activities that we can apply. Generosity, this is very important, which we call dana. When you heard the word dana, it might come to your mind or giving dana to temple, offering food for monks. You might think in that way, but dear friends, practicing generosity is not, not that, not just that. According to the Buddhist explanation, you can categorize into three groups, generosity. Giving basic needs, giving knowledge, giving life. This is the way how you can practice generosity. Giving basic, basic needs means you can give someone to eat something, provide a basic, as a, as a basic things, providing food, providing shelter, providing Cloth, providing medicine. This, this is means giving basic needs. This is the way how we can practice generosity. So, according to this explanation, you might have thought so. To practice generosity, we might need money. Is there any way that we can practice generosity without spending any penny? Yes. How? Think about in this manner. We eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, and sometimes uh, uh, some suffer. All these time, we are giving food to our body. 
in this body there are so many living beings have you heard about your body there are living beings inside your body there are so when you eating breakfast you can maintain your metta thoughts loving friendliness thoughts oh all the beings who are receiving this foods may they be well happy and peaceful then you are practicing generosity but you are eating yourself but same time you have opportunity to increase your metta thoughts this is the result of practicing generosity and also this body not belongs to you the body is not belongs to you so i am helping this body to survive given food you can think in this thinking so oh i am given food i am sleeping to help my body i want to give the, give a break for my body that's why i am sleeping i am i am sleep because to give a break for my body this body is working all the time i want to give a break for this body so i am sleeping now this is the way how you can practice generosity do you need to spend any money for that you don't want to spend any penny without spending any penny you can practice generosity in this manner given knowledge dhamma dana this is very important thing according to the buddhist explanation among among the other activities given knowledge is the most uh, valuable meritorious deeds that we can do given knowledge as you know our parents are sharing their knowledge with us our parents are sharing their knowledge with us that's why they always telling us okay don't do this try to do this they are telling us they are advising us if we are going to do some wrong thing they are with us and they say uh uh this is not a good thing you not supposed to do this but these are the good things you can apply you can do this is the way how they explain they are giving knowledge they are sharing their experience their experiences and their knowledge with us so they are practicing generosity giving knowledge you also can do same thing you might have some friends classmates and colleague uh, uh, fear groups same age uh, friends so you have different experience than your friends so you can share that experience with them with compassionate mind this is the very important loving friendliness thoughts and compassionate thoughts are very important to practice generosity particularly to give it knowledge so you can share with others according to the buddhist explanation the buddha said what is the greatest things that you can do for your parents the buddha said greatest things sharing a uh, given knowledge particularly for giving dhamma knowledge for them how giving dhamma knowledge you can help them to reduce their ignorance reducing their ignorance through dhamma knowledge you can help them to gain the wisdom this is the greatest things that you can do as children to your parents so giving knowledge is one of important thing so you can practice this generous generous activities all the time even though you don't have any penny it does not matter you can practice it how as i mentioned now and also i can uh, explain it more more with more details likewise when you when you are in with your friends in the classroom sometimes perhaps uh, you participated uh, a lessons with others 
that lesson was very easy for you everything clicked very well with you but there are some other others who did not get well with that topic and that subject so if you can help them to increase their knowledge experience with the loving friendliness thoughts that is also giving knowledge practicing generosity even sometimes perhaps when you are in outside in your in your in your classroom and if someone asking directions to go some other places if you can give them directions with compassionate thoughts that is also giving knowledge sharing knowledge it is also practicing generosity in this manner you can practice generous generosity many ways now as as i explain here giving basic needs and giving knowledge is to to different things next one is giving life in traditional view point as you know sri lankan most of sri lankan things giving life mean uh, uh going to butcher house uh, paying some money uh, taking out uh, some cows chickens from i mean already who are who were they are to kill if you can pay extra money and then uh, taking them out from them and then uh, let them to go away from them that is the only thing that giving life practice generosity that's not there are so many ways that you can give life to others very simple way i can give an uh, explanation about this giving life there is a stranger who is coming opposite opposite, opposite side on on road you are meeting that person on on road you are meeting a stranger you don't talk to that person you don't even look at that person you are going on your path your journey that person also going on that uh, his path and his journey but they both both of you recognize each of uh, each other as human being but they did not communicate to each other what kind of thoughts would be there you recognize that person as a human being oh that guy is passing his face look like uh, uh, he is in kind of a situation but both of are not able to have any kind of communication but because of that meeting you both depart in each other with doubtful thoughts you have a question mark in your mind who is that guy what is what he is doing here in this time you know what you are doing but you don't know you are curious to know what that person is doing there but you did not have any communication with that person you both cross each other without communication but doubt is here they are now giving life now threatening life each other why doubt is there who is that guy what he is doing there all these are the threatens that you have in your mind but dear friends just think about it. basically if you both stop there and then you did the communication a little bit oh yeah hello how are you good morning good evening huh how are you what you are doing here if you just communicate with the smiling smiling then you can build up very good relationship with that person no doubt there no anger no any unwholesome thoughts because you each other smile and you each other chirpy words now you are happy you both are happy this is giving life 
this is given life why doubt and fear is the most dangerous thoughts that we have which is threatening our life when you smile to someone the particularly for the stranger you are reducing your fear and doubt same as you are helping to others to reduce doubt and fear from their mind so when you reduce doubt and fear from the mind you have opportunity to maintain happiness because because of that happiness you can help to gain your life gain your life span this is the way how you can practice giving life giving life just smiling and just saying hi to that person so dear friends now you can see the way that we can practice generosity giving basic giving knowledge and giving life is there any questions you can hands up and ask no question is it clear um i have a question yes so you said that um fear and doubt are like the worst kinds of things but what is the difference and like where is the line between being cautious and like trying to protect yourself and living in like fear and doubt okay who is who asked that question i don't see um minadi okay your question is fear and doubt is the most threatening thing for our life is that yes okay then uh, what is the other part of your question but the like no fear and no doubt is mm. like living like like having no fear also includes not being um caught like being mindful of like self okay. preservation okay okay so, now we can go yeah if you don't have fear and doubt how would be the your situation if you don't have fear and doubt then how would be the your situation um you would be free yes yes but you also like it's like if you're crossing the street and you don't have like a fear that like or a doubt that a car will come in mm -hmm. then you will cross the street without looking like side to side to make sure of that okay. so that lead with like you being hit mhm mm mhm mm mhm okay this is the way how you should uh, understand it when you free from doubt and fear your mind would uh, definitely should be mindful because you don't have extra things in your mind you are free from doubt i mean you you are free from whole unwholesome activities now your wholesomeness is there wholesomeness always connecting with your mindfulness if you don't have unnecessary thoughts in your mind then you are mindful so you can directly recognize whether path is clear or not is someone is there to do harmful things or not everything you can recognize very quickly very fast because your mind is very clear and clean your mind is very clean and clear so when you are when you are free from doubt and fear means your mind is very clear and concentrated mind would be there it is the nature so you don't need to worry about your mindfulness because there is opportunity to gain mindfulness that's why in noble eightfold path 
as you know, samma vacha, samma kamant. All these pali, samma vacha means uh, uh, right word, right speech, and right actions, which is directly re regarding your behavior. You don't have any unwholesome thoughts, unwholesome activities there for what? To develop your concentration. Concentration, you can gain your concentration through your moral, discipline, virtue. So, as I mentioned, fearless life, doubtless life is the result of moral, is the result of your development of your virtue. So, you can be free from all these unnecessary thoughts and you can focus on very well with your necessary thoughts, necessary things. It's happened because of your merits, your happiness, because already you are eliminated, uh, you avoid unwholesome stages from your mind. Now you are maintaining wholesomeness with you. This is the resource that you can gain through practicing generosity. Is it clear now? Yes, thank you, Bhante. No problem. Okay, can I go to the next one? Discipline. Taming word and actions. This is the meaning of discipline. Taming word and actions. As you know, we, have, we, we, we use words to communicate with others. Uh, but the, but as a human being, we are supposed to communicate uh, with uh, wholesome thoughts and wholesome activities. This is very important. Communication means there should be the word should be meaningful. All the time it should be meaningful. This is very important. The Buddha Buddha use. Someone can be a person who has very sweet word, but the Buddha did not appreciate just mere sweet word. That should be the meaningful word to be sweet, to be sweet, meaningful word. So to have meaningful word, you have to tame your words, your words, not something like harmful to others. Words are very powerful. I can give an example. Just think about a judge. A judge can make miserable things and happiest things using his words. All the judgments are coming through the words. So if the judge order, okay, I'm putting him in jail for 10 years, he's going to, his, his, his life going to uh, miserable and unhappy saropul. No one can avoid it. Only the words were there. And same time, the judge can say, I dismiss the case, he is free from all these accusers. Then that person can be free from all these unwholesome troubles, unwholesome thoughts, and all the other stress he can reduce. What was the most important thing in here? Words. So when we talking with others, we have to use sweet words. Sweet words means in here, according to the Buddhist explanation, meaningful, harmless words we should have. Meaningful, harmless words we should have. Because using words, we can kill someone. Don't you think that? Yes, we can kill someone just using our words. Words are very powerful. Therefore, we have to tame our words. We have to be mindful. What is the meaning of this word? We have to be mindful. 
with the meaning of the words all the time. Therefore, we have to tame our words. So the second one, we have to tame our action. We have to tame our action. We have rights. Speech also one of rights that we have, but go beyond that as human being, we have rights to protect our humanity, human quality. So to protect our human qualities, we have to pay attention. We have to be mindful. We have to tame our word and actions. Why? We have rights for speech and same as human being, we have to protect our humanity. That is our rights. We have to think about our human qualities. That is the first thing. Other living beings are, as animals, they have their rights, but they don't have that qualities that we call, which we call human qualities. Therefore, they are free from culture, but culture, we have culture, we have norms, we have values, we have taboos. We have to respect all these things. To respect all these norms, values, taboos, and laws, we have to tame our word and actions. This is the discipline. When you on roads in your vehicle, you have to follow the rules there. That is discipline. You have to follow the speed limit. You have to follow the other rules. That is discipline. When you are in uh, supermarket, you have to follow the rules and guidelines. Particularly these days, everybody is asking to wear a mask. That is kind of disciplinary things. So we have to follow that. If you are not following, you are not uh, taming your word and actions. So you are in trouble same as you are making others in danger, put into danger. So you should have discipline, tame in your word and accents. This is the way how you can develop your virtue. The next one is the meditation, mind cultivation, trying to get rid defilements from your mind, developing your concentration. This is the meditation. Meditation is mind cultivation. Uplifting your abilities, mental abilities. Increasing your mental abilities. This is meditation. Meditation is a technique to develop your mind abilities, mental abilities. So we have to apply all these activities to increase your merits and wholesomeness. For why? To develop your mind, you can change your behavior and you can, if you are in an unhappy situation, lack of happiness, you can turn into happiness and that happiness you can establish as eternal happiness. And finally, you can get into eternal happiness. Happiness is the goal for our life. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? I have no questions. No questions means you realize everything or you did not realize anything. Is that the meaning? You realize everything better than me or you did not realize anything? Uh, I, I realized everything you said because everything you said, I thought of an example in which it happens in my daily life. Like whenever I see someone in the hallway in school, I always say hello and then I always hold the door for people and some people seem very happy, especially if they're carrying lots of stuff with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good, good, good. How about with that? With that do you have anything? Uh, 
Yeah, I, I also understand that. I don't really, I don't have any questions at the moment. Okay. The hazard? No? Okay. Samir Abekon, this might be Dasun. Dasun, I like to see you in long time. I did not see. <laughs> Um, hi. Ah. Yeah, is one of my students long time ago. Actually, before you meet you all, the son had met me at the Dhamma school, huh? Yeah. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm 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 good. This is your Nangi? I never met your Nangi. Yeah, this is not me. Met me. Hello. Hello. How are you? Yeah. Meha, meha, how grown? Meha, you're a big girl, huh? Five years old now. I'm through Podiva Kali Gekka. Masa Ganak. Oh, Masa de Gakka Gekali. Yet the Hanuma Hamadama Yatika. I heard it. Chandramata? My mic mute, Oh, Hamdra Nakame. Api Labanusumani Nine, 